uh, actually we have started with the contract of agency and we'll just continue with that uh, particular portion so uh, last class I, I think we have uh, dealt with the delegation that uh, that particular point where when uh, an agent can delegate his power so we have also uh, gone through the maxim that is delegate is not protest delegate a delegate cannot further delegate his power this we were dealt in the last class so we'll continue with the contract of agency which is the last portion of the special contracts and now the first uh, portion we are just going to discuss is about the sub agent so who is a sub agent sub agent means he is a person who is employed and who is acting under the control of original agent in the business of agency so sub agent is a person who is employed as well as who is under the control who is acting under the control of the main agent or the original agent that is appointed by the principal so who uh, principal always appoints an agent actually once an agent is appointed he is not able to delegate his power to another person but in some or in special circumstances what this agent does is he appoints a person he employs a person and who will act under the control of this original agent and he is known or he is termed as sub agent and if a sub agent is properly appointed if he is having an authority if original agent is in, as having an authority to appoint a sub agent and if is the sub agent is properly appointed he is always bound by and responsible for all his acts as if he is the agent originally appointed by the principal so that's what we have to uh, uh, listen or we should be very careful with regard to this point suppose a sub agent is properly appointed or if that original agent is having an authority to appoint a sub agent then the whatever acts done by the sub agent is bound by and is responsible for all the acts as if he is the original agent appointed by the principal now agent's responsibility for sub agent so we have to feel that or we have to just pinpoint the main aspect here is the agent is responsible to the principal for all the acts of a sub agent because who is appointing a sub agent who employs a sub agent of course the original agent here the principal is not appointing the principal is not employing the sub agent so under these circumstances whatever acts of the sub agent who will be responsible for all the acts of the sub agent the original agent is responsible for all the acts of the sub agent towards whom towards the principal and again the sub agent is responsible for his acts to the agent but not to the principal so and moreover the sub agent is only responsible towards whom towards the original agent he is not responsible for his acts to the principal but if it is a fraudulent act if it is a willful wrong then of course the sub agent is always responsible to the principal in the exceptional cases if it is a fraudulent act of or if there is a willful wrong from the part of the sub agent then he is responsible towards the principal so we have to uh, the main point here is whatever acts is done by the sub agent who is responsible the original agent is responsible and sub agent is responsible for his act only to the original agent and not to the principal and he the sub agent 
will be responsible for the acts done by him to the principal if he has done a fraudulent act or if he has done a willful wrong. So these are the two exemptions whereby the subagent is directly responsible for his act towards the principal. In all other instances, you could say that the subagent is always responsible to the original agent and not to the principal. So only under two circumstances, we can say that the subagent is also responsible towards the principal in the case of a fraudulent act or in the case of a willful fraud. Then another instance. Suppose say subagent is appointed by the original agent. But the agent, this original agent, doesn't have any authority to appoint this subagent. Then the original agent is responsible not only to the principal, but also to the third person. Because in the contract of agency, an agent actually, there is actually connection to the third person too. So he is acting as an agent of the principal towards a third person. So if a subagent is appointed without any authority, if he does any act, then whatever acts done by the subagent, the original agent is responsible not only to the principal, but also to the third person, whom he, is rep he represents the principal. So there will be a third person where the agent is representing this principal. So in that sense, you should say that you could uh, you know you should know that whatever acts done by the subagent without any authority, the original agent is responsible not only to the principal alone, but also to the third person whom he represents the principal. So here what we have to take in account is whenever an agent appoints a subagent. He should have a proper authority to appoint the subagent. Otherwise, whatever does by the subagent, the entire burden will be upon the shoulders of the original agent. And he is liable not only to the principal alone, but also to the third party or the third person. And in some instance, we could see that. The agent will be given a duty by the principal just to give a name of a person, just to name a person to do a particular kind of business in that contract of agency. So the thing is, suppose Sharath. Uh, uh, Sharath is the principal, and Sharath asked the let. Uh, Ashwati be the agent and Sharat asked Ashwati just to name a person for conducting a particular business or, spe or special business. So what Ashwati does, Ashwati names a person and if he is only naming a person, he is not a sub-agent but he is the original agent. He acts as if he is the original agent because he is conducting only a particular kind of business, a particular kind of uh, contract of business or contract of agency. Suppose uh, uh, Mithuna, Ashwati name Mithuna. So Mithuna is not a sub agent. Here, Sharat, who is a principal, he asks Ashwati, who is the agent. Just to name a person for conducting a particular business. And Ashwati names Mithuna. So here Mithuna is not a sub-agent. But he is the original agent as if he is, uh, Mithuna is like Ashwati. Original agent. Because Mithuna is appointed only for conducting a particular a special contract of agency. Okay. And suppose Sharat asks Ashwati to name a person for conducting a particular contract of business or agency. Then Ashwati is naming a person. And while naming a person, 
Ashwati should take all kinds of due diligence. All kinds of due diligence as if an ordinary prudent man would take. <coughs> so, she should show all kinds of diligence. As if an ordinary prudent man would take care while naming a person. Suppose, if Ashwati name a person, if that other person is not acting according to, if Ashwati has taken all due care in exercising her power of naming a person for conducting a particular business, then Ashwati is not responsible for any wrongful act by the person whom Ashwati has named. So, when here, here I just gave an illustration as Sharath is the principal, Ashwati is an agent, and Sharath asks Ashwati to name a person for conducting a particular contract of agency. Then Ashwati names a person. But while Ashwati is naming a person, he's not a sub agent, he's the original agent, but she should take all due care while naming a person. If she, stays, if she has taken all due care, exercising this power of discretion, and in spite of that, even, if, even after taking all due care and all due diligence in exercising the power of naming a person, that the person is conducting or has done a negligent or wrongful act, Ashwati is not right. Because Ashwati has taken all due care. So while exercising this discretionary power, we should take we should be very conscious while naming a person for conducting that particular kind of business. I think it's clear. So whenever an agent is asked to name a person for conducting a particular business, we should be very careful, we should be very cautious in naming the person. We are having such a sort of discretion in exercising this power of naming a person because he's not a sub agent, he's an original agent. And if, in spite of this, the person who have named us uh, done some wrongful act, of course, this original agent, the person who have named, is not at all like. If no due care is taken, if no due diligence is taken, then, of course, will be liable for the wrongful act or the negligent act of the person whom we have named. Even if an agent has done some act without any authority, if the original agent is doing some act, if the original agent or sub-agent, if he's doing any act, without any authority. Later on, the principal can either ratify it or dissolve. Very important, the point. Even if the agent or sub-agent has done some act without any proper authority, even in the absence of a proper authority, if the agent, the sub agent, has done some act, the principal, he can either ratify it, can accept it later on, or he can disown it. Suppose if he is ratified, it, it will have the very same effect as if it is done with the proper authority. Suppose an agent has done some act. He has done without any authority of the principal. But later on, the principal ratifies it. That means, what is the presumption? He has ratified it as if he has done, he is having the proper authority. So, it will take into effect or it will be taken into effect that the particular act was done with proper authority. So whenever the principal is ratifying a particular act, it 
it as it can either be expressed or implied by the content of the parties so here we have to uh, be very clear that even if an agent even if a sub agent is doing some act or did some act or is going to do some act without any proper authority from the principal but if they have done it that can either be dissolved or can be ratified once it is ratified it will have the very same effect that as if it was done with the proper authority from the principal and this ratification can either be expressed or implied implied in the sense by the conduct of the parties whatever may be whether it is expressed or implied or for the ratification there should be have a we should have a correct knowledge of the facts of the case so when, whether we are uh, actually ratifying or dissolving or whatever may be any act that is done by the agent without any proper authority whether you are ratifying whether it's expressed or implied we should have the knowledge of the facts so that is we should be very certain with the knowledge or we should have the very certainty about the facts suppose principle is ratify and a transaction but in that transaction there is an authorized act but if a principal is ratifying the whole transaction that means then that transaction has brought into effect so they are not partially ratified if you are ratifying a particular act you are ratifying it whole even if that ratification is having some unauthorized act you have to ratify whole but whenever you are ratifying it, the thing is it should not cause any damage it should not cause any injury to a third person so before just uh, going to the particular section i told you that whenever a particular act is done without any proper authority the principal can ratify it he can express or imply it. but he should have a knowledge of the facts the simple example is suppose i have purchased some goods on behalf of ashwat i am the agent and ashwat is the ashwat doesn't give any authority for me to purchase but later on ashwati what she did what she did is whatever i purchased she have sold it to me that means she have accepted my authorized tax i have purchased without any authority and that was to ashwati ashwati what she did is she sold to me that means she have ratified my unauthorized tax suppose i am giving ashwati's amount to rati without any proper authority so i am the agent ashwati is the principal i am giving ashwati's amount to rati without any proper authority but later on ashwati accepts the interest from rati that means ashwati have accepted my unauthorized act as she has ratified my unauthorized act so i think with that illustration you have understood that point so the thing is at the agent i am not having an authority but in spite of without any authority the uh, amount that belongs to ashwati has given to rati but later on ashwati have accepted the interest out of that means 
Even if I acted without any authority, my act was ratified by Supreme Mitra. But whatever act has been uh, ratified, that should not cause any injury. That should not cause any damage to a third. A simple example. Ashwati is a lesser. Rati is a lesser. I am a third party. I am giving a notice to Rati to terminate leave. Whether Ashwati ratifies or no. Because that will cause an injury or damage to them. So even if I am having no authority, I am issuing notice to Rati for the termination of leave. Ashwati doesn't want to accept it because that will ensure that will cause damage to them. So, whenever we are ratifying without any authority, that should not cause any sort of damage. That should not ensure any person. Then only the ratification will, be, will have effect. So, I think uh, you might have got that two illustration. So, even if the principle is ratified, the unauthorized act, the ratification will be in court. And that principal should have the adequate knowledge of the facts. The unauthorized act, if ratified, cause any damage or injury to third person that cannot be done. The next important point is how does a contract of agency terminate? Contract of agency terminates either by renunciation by the agent, revocation by the principal, by the death or insanity of either the principal or the agent, or if the principal is adjudged as an insult. So, in these circumstances, the contract of agency terminates. Either on the renunciation by the agent or revocation by the principal, or if a particular contract of agency has been accomplished, that particular purpose has been accomplished, or due to the death or uh, due to the insolvency I and mean, the unsoundness of mind by either the principal or the agent, or if the principal has become an or is an adjudge as insolvent. So in these circumstances, contract of agency will become a